In today's video, we are going to look at five of the best starfighter designs you could fly in the Star Wars universe. We are going to look at one starfighter from each of the major Star Wars factions. These being the Rebel Alliance slash New Republic, Galactic Empire, Galactic Republic, and Confederacy of Independent Systems. With a final fifth ship, which I think is my favorite design of starfighter overall in the universe. We are looking at fighters from both Legends and Disney canon. The only limitation I am placing on my choices is that the selected vessel had to see widespread service with the faction it served with. So, with one-off prototypes or small production run high cost and highly complicated designs, not acceptable, apologies to the Empire in advance, let's get going. Now, for the New Republic, or the Alliance to Restore the Republic, we have the successor to the X-Wing series, the E-Wing Starfighter. This fighter craft was developed early in the post-Endor period as a replacement for the X-Wing, but through a variety of outside factors unrelated to its own capabilities, such as politics, resource limitations, and limited support facilities in some regions, the craft never quite managed to replace the older X-Wing. The E-Wing is very well armed, having one gun less than its predecessor, though its guns were of a more advanced model. The ship also has shields, a hyperdrive, and torpedo launchers like the X-Wing, though its systems are again more advanced and generally make the ship slightly more capable in service than a late model X-Wing. This spot was almost taken up by the T-65 X-Wing, and really there's not a huge amount of difference in capability between the late Model X and the standard E-Wings, practically speaking. However, the E-Wing is still that little bit better and more modern. For the same reason, the T-70 X-Wing almost made this spot, but while it is probably about as capable as the E-Wing, the E-Wing is its own unique design, inspired by the classic X-Wing, but not a mildly touched-up copy. And I like variety in my starfighters, so we're going with the E-Wing as a good attempt. For the Galactic Empire, we have the TIE Interceptor. The TIE Interceptor is a space superiority fighter, in contrast with the previous entry on this list. Its primary function is to engage other fighters. The craft began development as an improvement over the earlier TIE LN fighter the Empire had used previously as its mainline starfighter, after experience fighting advanced types used by the Rebellion had shown defects with this design, such as light armament and weak construction. Compared to its predecessor, the Interceptor featured additional laser cannons, higher speed and acceleration, improved targeting computers, the ability to carry missiles, and better structural integrity over the LN series. Further variants of the type produced later by the Empire would even feature shields and hyperdrives in place of the chin-mounted twin laser cannons. The Interceptor was a very capable fighter at the time of its introduction. The ship had the armament to match Rebellion fighter types, as well as the agility to dogfight successfully, while its speed allowed the ship to conduct boom and zoom tactics very well. Its missiles also greatly extended the range the craft could engage enemy fighters. While the Empire did field more capable models of Starfighter, among them the Defender, Phantom, TIE Advanced, Avenger, and my personal favorites, the Howl Runner and TIE Hunter, these fighters easily outmatched the Interceptor in capability, However, they were all built in very small numbers and for a variety of reasons failed to see widespread service, and so do not count. This really hurts the Empire overall though, as even though the Interceptor is a serious improvement over earlier models of fighter, it is still somewhat average compared to most fighters fielded by other factions. And if they had invested the time and effort into producing one of their many more advanced models, then they could have easily fielded one of the finest starfighter designs ever. Even so, the Interceptor is not bad and looks pretty cool and is likely great fun to fly. For the Republic, we have the Aggressive Reconnaissance 170 Starfighter, a long-range strike and recce aircraft 
not aircraft, but starfighter. The script is a little bit off here, my bad. Anyway, the fighter is equipped with heavy laser and torpedo armament, strong shields, defensive armament, and a crew of three with an astromech included. The ship has a capable hyperdrive, which extends its range significantly over most fighters used by the, new, or by the Old Republic. The fighter was developed to perform the role of long-range strike, scouting for fleets, and escort of convoys and fleets even through hyperspace. Although it's a bit slower and heavier than the usual fighters in service, being more of a scout bomber, the ARC combines heavy striking power with a very survivable and reliable hull. Most Republic fighters are much smaller and weaker, with ships such as the Eta-2 and V-Wing being very fast, but also weakly built, small, short-ranged, and lightly armed. As such, these craft could be easily damaged or totally destroyed by even a glancing hit, in contrast to the rugged and dependable ARC. Opposing the ARC-170 for the Confederacy of Independent Systems, we have the Droid Tri-Fighter, a small, very agile and responsive fighter featuring a droid brain capable of operating at faster than light speeds. This was much more advanced than that fitted aboard the typical Separatist fighter models, like the Vulture droid. The Tri-Fighter was developed late during the Clone Wars as a counterpart and possible replacement of the Vulture, which was beginning to show its age next to the latest fighter models of the Republic. The ship is likely the most advanced and agile fighter on this list, and carried an impressive armament despite its small size likely due to not needing to carry the cockpit and life support systems an organic pilot would need. The choice of the Tri-Fighter was honestly the easiest decision to make on this list, as the CIS lacks much diversity in its fighter models. Aside from the Tri-Fighter, the Vulture Droid series doesn't have too much diversity in it, and there really isn't all that much to choose from aside from the Vulture and the Tri-Fighter. But fortunately, the Tri-Fighter is still very capable and powerful in its own right. And finally, in the fifth place on this list, and now that we have run out of major factions, I thought I would mention my favorite fighter in all of Star Wars, the type I would choose to fly as my personal ship if I was given the opportunity. What is this ship? Well, you can likely see from the picture which has been on screen, it's the Skip Ray Blast Boat a somewhat unusual but very capable model of heavy starfighter. The skip ray has a cockpit with a tech bay and maintenance area behind it, giving you some legroom if you need it on long voyages. In combat, the ship features heavy armor and very strong weaponry, allowing it to pose a direct threat to even some small frigates. Some even do not count it as a starfighter at all, but rather a small capital ship in its own right given its strike power, shielding, and general capability. While the Empire did make some use of the type aboard a few Star Destroyers, it was by no means a common sight in the Empire's arsenal, and failed generally to see widespread service elsewhere, though a few mercenary and smuggler groups would make use of the type on occasion. These features of significant internal space, high speed, power and armor make it my choice of starfighter to fly. And the legroom it offers just edges it out over the more typical fighters which have just a cockpit. I might have chosen otherwise something like the X-Wing or TIE Defender, but honestly I like the idea of being able to get up and stretch my legs. And that's my list. Let me know what your favorite starfighter is and if your choices would differ from mine. And if you did like the video, be sure to like and share it, as that helps the YouTube algorithm deity to know that people may want to see it. As always, stay safe and have a good day.